ladies and gentlemen, I am back and I come bearing gifts because in this video we're going to be building ourselves a gaming PC with enough VRAM. That's right, 12 gigabytes. This is the RX 6700 XT. You can actually get these for a very affordable price now, which is why PowerColor actually reached out and wanted to sponsor this video. And we're going to be putting together a pretty epic little white build that doesn't really cut any corners but has stupid amounts of performance for 1080p and more importantly, 1440p gaming. And we are going to be doing this slightly differently here today because if you don't already know, I've just got back from Computex and honestly I've had the best time. It's been fantastic. It's great to be back in the studio. This is actually still colder than it was in Taiwan even though we got all of the studio lights and things on. It was a very very cool time but while I was there I got to do something that was very different and gives me a whole new appreciation for graphics cards that I've never really had before because PowerColor actually took us to the brand new factory and while we were there we essentially got to see how they put their GPUs together and honestly it's fascinating but for now we're going to take a look at the 6700 XT. This is the Hell Hound. It comes in two different colours. You've got the Spectral White, which is this one, which as you can tell is white and it's perfect for this build. But if you do want to grab yourself a bit of a bargain, then there are also some cheaper 6700 XTs from PowerColor out there. I've seen them for as low as £330, which compared to when this came out and GPU prices were skyrocketing, you'd be lucky to find this for like five, six hundred pounds or something. And bearing in mind that this does come with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, this is already going to be pretty well equipped for maybe some light 4K gaming, but realistically I'd say high refresh rate 1440p 6700 XT is a brilliant GPU. So that's our GPU it's going to give us some pretty awesome frame rates when we put this inside our rig but I do want to walk you through my idea and what we're sort of going for today and this is a brand new case that literally arrived this morning when I saw it I was like thank you so much you have honestly saved my bacon because if you want to do a white build you need a white case and this is from Cougar and Cougar is a bit of a not funny company but they sell a range of products some of which are definitely on the cheaper side but they are literally cheaper and then others come along like this that have already really impressed me because the build quality of this is top notch. You've got three fans at the front and cleverly it's called the Duo Face Pro which we did have a bit of a joke about. It is a bit of a weird name but it makes sense when you realize that inside the box you get the choice of tempered glass or mesh. I think for what we're doing here today the tempered glass is going to be a decent option because it's not going to need as much airflow but if you were to put something like a RX 6900 XT or a 7900 XTX or something in there that does require a lot of airflow to keep it cool, then obviously you'd want to swap that out. But it's all down to personal preference. It also comes with RGB fans as standard. And if I realize that there's actually tape on this, you see the whole thing comes out nice and easily. Decent thick tempered glass side panel, good for acoustic isolation. The whole of the inside is white. I can't really see anything that isn't. Even the cables of the fans are white, which is something you don't always get. And the best bit really about this for me is that this case actually comes in at under, or at least it was supposed to come in at under $100. There might be a slight price difference for the white version, but either way, about $100 for all of this, I think is really enticing. Especially bear in mind you do also get this little RGB hub here as well that does make cable management easier and allows for better expandability. Let's pop this to one side for a second and actually start building on top of our motherboard. This is one that is actually more affordable than you might think. It's from ROG. It is a Strix B650 motherboard with B650 pretty much being the perfect platform for gamers that want to save money. But as you can see, this is I want to call it white, it's basically silvery white, but it's got all of the features really that you need, like DDR5 support, support for AM5 CPUs, that's the most important one. And the CPU that we're using here today is the 7700X, though to be honest, I'd probably recommend most people go for the 7700, as it is going to be a 65 watt chip and is going to give you lower thermals and thus you won't have to spend as much on a cooler. To be fair though, the main difference really is going to be the price of the chip itself. And if you can buy a 7700X for the same sort of price as the 7700X, 700, then the choice doesn't really matter too much. But we're going to drop this in our slot and then just close it down, make a real hash of it, try again and save this for later on. In terms of the memory, we've got some stuff here from G-Skill. This is the Trident Z RGB. This actually isn't an AMD Expo kit. I'm not expecting it to cause any issues, but if you can buy a stick of this, or I suppose two sticks of this, uh, that does actually support AMD Expo, that is going to give you better compatibility. But as you can tell, this is a silvery kit of RAM, 32 gigabytes of the stuff. 
running at 5600 megahertz. Obviously you can spend more and get 6000, that's what a lot of people will want to do. But then of course, as always, it pretty much comes down to price. Always buy the fastest kit really that you can afford within reason. Don't spend loads of extra money to get fast RAM when you could be spending it on a better graphics card. But that's all well and good. It's now time to install our SSD. And this is a brand new one that was actually sent out by Lexar. This is the NM790. And I'm already quite impressed with the RRP of this. It's a Gen 4 drive that's not looking to break the bank essentially. And one of the issues that I've had with Lexar SSDs the last few years hasn't been the SSDs themselves. It's just been the release schedule. Like they seem to come out after everyone else's and then the price just tends to be a little bit more when it comes to real world street price. But as far as I can tell, the pricing on this does seem to be, I guess, what I'd call acceptable for an SSD. It's always worth doing some shopping around, though. If you've watched these videos before, you know I no longer really recommend specific SSDs, so to speak. More so give you an idea, because there's always sales on, there's always good deals to be found. Don't buy a specific SSD just because you've heard of it in a video. I'm going to need a screwdriver. Here's one I made earlier. I mean, a screwdriver factory would actually be pretty interesting, wouldn't it? I should resume my story in talking about the factory that we went to. So on the ground floor, we had a talk about everything that they do there, and then we went up to the level one. And this is where they do a lot of their RMAs. And it's actually pretty interesting to see the level of, I guess, finite detail that they have to go to to repair some of these GPUs. So the GPU itself, for example, if that gets damaged, then what they can do is essentially just remove the GPU and replace it with a new one and then bake it into place. And because this is done by people that literally do this for their job every single day, I have not seen steadier hands in my life. They have a load of different cameras and things in place so they can make sure all of the solder is going in the correct places. I have to say the lady that was actually showing us around, bless her, she was so lovely, but she showed us this whole process that was about 10, 15 minutes of this man doing all of this intricate work. And then when we were about to leave, she essentially jogged him and the solder all over the CPU essentially needed to be redone. Not CPU, the GPU. The solder on the GPU needed to be redone. And she thought it was quite funny and the worker did not find it very funny. She was very apologetic though. And seriously, all of the staff there were absolutely fantastic, regardless of whether they were showing us round or they were actually on the production line. They all clearly knew what they were doing and they really did make us feel right at home. Let's once again shelf story time for now and then move on to the next bit. And I have to admit, this is not my favorite cooler in the world. This is the NZXT T120. It's their air cooler. And the best thing going for it is that it looks fantastic. It's a white RGB cooler. And for this build, I think it will be absolutely fine. However, I would actually recommend going for this if you're going for the 7700. If you're looking at the 7700X, we're going to have to wait until we actually get to the end of this video and start to see thermals before we can make our final judgment. Because when we used this was an i5 that was using about 175, 200 watts, it essentially wasn't good enough and that CPU was overheating. So I think as long as you're using this with a CPU that is of a lower wattage, so basically a Ryzen CPU, it should be absolutely fine. But keen to see thermals a little bit later. Step one is going to be to remove these AM5 mounting brackets. Take away the plastic, but do keep the screws because you then need to grab these space little spacer type things. You drop them on top, grab the cooler, make sure NZXT's logo is facing the way you want it to face, and then drop this on top. Then you can pick up the brackets and just gently place this down on top. Screw the cooler to the bracket, and then you can secure it down with the screwdriver. And then connect the CPU fan connection and the addressable RGB. There is definitely a lot of cable here though. Usually I just stick it under the cooler, but this is gonna have to go sort of the back of the PC once we've actually got this inside our case. And I believe now is that time. We're going to use our new super wide angle lens. He says it not being wide enough. Look, there you go. Oh, look at that. I mean, if you like feet, there's my toes. This channel's got weird and I don't like it. And I also don't like how you can now see all of the crap that's in this room. Maybe let's get rid of that. Or maybe we should just shut up and get on with it. I hear you, I hear you. We're going to grab our motherboard and gently lower this down into place. Oh, they've not put them all in. Oh, Cougar, you're doing so well. Why would you not put all the standoffs in? This is a big case. But anyway, enough about that. Let's actually get this party started, closed, by inserting some extra standoffs into the motherboard tray, picking up our motherboard and then just gently lining this up with the back and then screwing it down. Once you've done that, oh, you should get something that starts to look a little bit like this and you can see our lovely white build making good progress. We do now need to start thinking about cable management though. It's worth noting that these cables aren't white. You can of course buy extensions from other companies if it bothers you, but the power supply that we're using today sadly doesn't have white cables, so it doesn't really matter anyway. 
So we're going to plug these things in now, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to take this opportunity to finish my power colour story, because once we actually got into the production line, things really did start to heat up. Essentially, you've got all of these machines almost chained together. They look a little bit like 3D printers in a way. It's that sort of size, but you have this robotic arm that's essentially going zoom, 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 and is inserting all of these different components into the right place before presenting it along the line to the next bit of machinery. And usually when you do a factory tour like this, I mean, I suppose technically I wouldn't know because it was the first one I'd been on. You're not really allowed to film anything, but because this was more of an assembly line and they've got the latest cutting edge tech, or at least so they tell me, they were actually really quite keen for us to film everything and it was a fantastic privilege. It was really, really insightful. I mean, we did have to go through a room in order to get to the production line where it sort of blows all of the dust off you, which was definitely quite interesting. <laughs> But honestly, it was fascinating. There was so much going on. And if you're like me and are, are a big nerd and you wanted to see how all of these things get made, it's really quite fascinating. Especially once you then go into the next room, which is where everything essentially gets finally assembled. They're essentially putting the cards together and then actually boxing it up. This bit was just so calm as well. So it's all of these people just gently doing their job, nothing out of the ordinary other than all of these thousand pound GPUs that are just gradually going past them and the sheer scale of it was so cool and also seeing how they test all of these graphics cards as well to make sure not only that they output a signal and that they work but also they test them long term i think they said it was 90 days of burn-in testing something like that anyway to make sure that there aren't going to be any problems and so far so good because this factory only opened at the end of last year but regardless it's fair to say i definitely have a newfound appreciation for power color gpus and the next one that comes in when i do an unboxing i'm going to know exactly where it came from. Super cool. All of the cables themselves are pretty much business as usual. You've got USB-C here, so do make sure you buy a motherboard that does have USB-C. But I will say that I am now swapping around the RGB cooler so that it's on the same sort of loop, if you like, as all of these RGB fans around the back. This is just so we can get everything synced together. Also shout out as well to a feature that I do love to see on cases, which is where the reset switch by default actually changes the RGB rather than resetting your motherboard, because let's be honest, everyone just holds the power button down anyway. But we plug our NZXT cooler into here, swing it back round once more, grab our screwdriver and then get the graphics card ready to go in. Which is of course very simple, we're just going to remove slot covers 2 and 3. And then now of course comes the most fascinating bit of any gaming PC build, actually installing our lovely GPU inside our case. And as you can see here, this is literally, well once I move this, and this. I mean when have I ever said this is a perfect fit? Very rarely in a PC build. And the one time that I actually go for it, there are two things in the way. But look, once you move them, it goes in and it perfectly matches the theme. Look at this rig. I really wish I'd use white cables. But at this point, we are pretty much ready to go. All we need to do is actually get our power supply installed. And this is not going to win any awards for the most out there one in the world. But I really love Be Quiet because sure enough, their power supplies, as you'd expect, are quiet. And I've never really had an issue with any of them, to be fair, regardless of whether it's like a higher end one or something like this that is a bit more entry level. I mean, I say entry level, it's entry level for Be Quiet. We've still got 80 plus of gold rating, so you know it's gonna be pretty efficient. It's fully modular as well, so you only need to use the cables that you actively need in your build. And actually, this seems to be very new because if you look at this, you've actually got a PCI Gen 5 connection that will output 450 watts peak, which is going to be very useful if you are going to want to upgrade this to a future GPU that uses this standard. Granted, 450 isn't the absolute max, so you won't be putting, I don't know, something like a 4090 in this, but for pretty much everything else, very nice to have. Let's get these cables plugged into the power supply. Pick up your power supply, fan facing downwards in this case, and then line it up with the back. Fixy fix, fixy fix. Last few cables to plug in then. We've got our GPU. Our ATX is this absolutely mahoosive one. And then our CPU power connections up here. We've got one eight pin and one four. And then that my friends should be our rig complete. And yes, I think white cables finish this off. When you get the chance, when your next paycheck comes in, swap out the cables for something a little bit more interesting. And I think this will really tie it together. But for now, I think this looks pretty awesome, actually. You can really see how everything loves to tie together here. You've got your CPU cooler, the white graphics card, and there's actually a white PCB on this as well. I can't believe I didn't notice that when I first took it out of the box. 
probably insane. And then everything just kind of looks the part. Should we get this thing turned on and see if it works? Oh, to be fair, I probably should show you around the back as well. This is with literally zero cable management. Not like a little bit, zero. I haven't touched anything. And as you can see, plenty of cable management space actually. You could tie cables up here, route them down. For 100 quid? Genuinely very impressed. Rightio then, I have the cable of our dreams. Let us press the on button and see if she lives. And immediately she does, but I realize I haven't actually plugged the case fans in because I'm a numpty. I was too busy talking about the power color factory tour, which was cool, but not as cool as fans would be calling our system. <laughs> I did think I'd forgotten something, but anyway, we don't need those for now. Let's just make sure that this is actually going to live. Oh, that sounds good. Nice and quiet, green light, ROG. Lovely stuff. But anyway, I think all that's left to do is grab our copy of Windows 11 on a USB flash drive. Press F1 to enter the setup. We turn on DOCP, save and exit. But as you can see, all is well. We're back in the BIOS, other than we're not booting into Windows. <laughs> okay, it seems as if my copy of Windows isn't actually on this drive after all. So give me a few hours to get all of this sorted, some games on this, and then we'll be right back and show you the performance. And that is it. We are here, all set up and ready to go. What do you think? I have made a fairly big change really, which is to swap this faceplate out for the mesh airflow version. I think it actually looks a little bit better to be fair as well. It's nice to have the option, but maybe this would work better in the black color if you're gonna have the glass at the front. The only issue that we have kind of already run into though is actually with the CPU cooler. It does look fantastic. They've done a great job from that sort of design. But with this particular CPU, it's not really the one I think I would go for. If you're going for the 7700, it's fine. But essentially, as soon as we started getting this PC up and running and installing things and the CPU started to max out, essentially, we were hitting like 90, 92 degrees, which in itself isn't actually a problem because these new Ryzen CPUs do like to run hot and get the most out of them for the most performance. But the problem is, unless you set a custom fan curve, you're gonna get quite a lot of noise. And when you're getting 90 degrees or so anyway, there's not really that much headroom. So either swap this out for something a little bit bigger, a bit better, or just go over the 7700 and save yourself some money. And our first game is going to be Apex Legends, but in order to give you some proper thermal data, I am going to put this side panel back on. And here we are, jumping out of the plane, running at 4K, just under max settings. And as you can see, we're getting a frame rate of around about 80 frames a second or so. And fundamentally, we're using around about 6,000, maybe it's gonna hit about 7,000 megabytes of VRAM. So way under the 12 gigabytes that we have on offer here today. And strictly speaking, this actually isn't a 4K graphics card, but it's a very flexible GPU that in something like Apex Legends, if you do wanna play it on like a TV, or maybe you've got like a high refresh rate monitor or something, then there are gonna be titles that you will want to play at higher resolutions and it's nice especially in some lighter titles something maybe a little bit older that you do have the horsepower to actually achieve this i'm not suggesting you do it with apex legends because obviously this is a game where fps is king but still getting around about 85 90 fps at 4k is definitely nothing to be sniffed at turn this down to 1440p though and things change drastically i mean look at that frame right now around about 200 and 15 FPS. That's basically double the frame rate that you get at 4K. That is pretty remarkable, and this is exactly why I think the 6700 XT is such a brilliant GPU, because it was good at the time, but I think the drivers have made such a big difference to these AMD graphics cards, and obviously now games are actually using more VRAM, and the prices of these has come down. It does make so much sense than before. I mean, obviously, yes, there will be a replacement for this card in the not too distant future, but at the time of filming, we genuinely have no idea when and I imagine the price of the replacement of this will still be about 400 pounds or so so 330 for this really not a bad option and of course if you turn it all the way down to 1080p then your frame rate is literally going to skyrocket through the roof you're now getting about 220 to 260 frames a second that is pretty wild and also if you take a look at the cpu usage at the top of your screen you'll see that we're not really getting into any bottleneck either around about 98 percent utilization that to me says that we're using all of this gpu and we're not wasting anything on the table with a cpu that isn't powerful enough i think this could well be the first game of apex that i've ever played where we haven't seen anyone at all whilst filming this performance bit. That is quite impressive, if not disappointing. I wanted to show you my skills, my prowess. Anyway, let's take this opportunity to move on to our next title, some Halo Infinite. And this is running at 4K. And unfortunately, as you can tell, this is not really the best level of experience because we're now getting sub 60 FPS. This is running at the high preset, but I've actually turned the textures up to ultra to sort of reflect more of a real world experience. 
So while you could play like this, it's not really what I would recommend. So instead, you're probably going to want to turn this down to 1440p. And when you do this, the frame rate does increase by quite a lot. It's still not as high as you're going to get in Apex Legends, so you could turn some of the settings down further, maybe reduce the resolution scale, but you're looking at around about 80 to 85 FPS or so, which is a solid experience, especially if you have a high frame rate monitor, but it's nothing particularly crazy. I mean, out of interest, what happens if we turn this down to medium? Not actually that much, slightly higher, but again, nothing absolutely crazy. We're getting around about 90 FPS or so now. And I wouldn't exactly say that I'm disappointed, but because this isn't a title that has any form of AMD FSR, Nvidia DLSS, XCSS, or anything like that, at least at the moment, there's not really a way to intelligently boost the frame rate besides setting a minimum frame rate and letting the game lower the resolution down a bit. So more intense than some of the other multiplayer titles. But let's go right ahead and turn this all the way down to 1080p and what are we getting? Around about 130 frames a second. So it's definitely increased. This is now fully saturating this 120 hertz display, but obviously it's nothing particularly crazy. So I think there's probably more room to go. But moving on, it's time for our next title, some Call of Duty Warzone 2. And we're gonna waste no time at all and jump straight out of the plane. This is running at what I've described as competitive settings, which is all of the long visuals, but none of the like effects and things that you just don't really need in a multiplayer title. And we're currently getting around about 70 72 frames a second or so, but it is definitely worth noting that this is again running at 4K resolution. So if you want to hook this up to a 4K TV, fantastic. But once again, not really the way I would choose to play. But it's still interesting that card that is now around about, what, two and a half years old can still cope with this without a problem. Pretty cool. But let us turn this down to a much more realistic resolution of 1440p. And now you're getting really anywhere between about 120 to 140 frames a second or so. It's probably about right for Warzone. I think a lot of us would again prefer to have a little bit more, but you can tweak the settings or of course turn this down a little bit more. But it is worth noting that you might run into a bit of a CPU bottleneck if you do go over the 150 FPS mark or so. You could step up to something like a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, but realistically, if you're trying to get the price to performance of this GPU, I wouldn't say spending even more on a processor would make sense. But as you can see, once you're going in the corridors a little bit more, the frame rate does actually start to increase. We're now looking at about 150, 190, and bearing in mind that we are actually recording as well, I'd say overall, not too shabby at all. Oh, well, what I was trying to say is that we've now turned it down to 1080p to test our theory of CPU bottlenecking, and we were capping out at about 155, 160 before we get a bit of a CPU bottleneck. So I think all round, it's definitely not a bad option. You could step up to something like this 6750 XT, but then the problem with that is it's not got the exact same value as this card. So I think if I was building a new gaming PC now for about 1440p, the 6700 XT would be the one I would probably pick. But let us move on to something a fair bit more interesting though, because this is Hogwarts Legacy. I'm sure you've seen this countless times before, but this is an example of a game that just does not run very well if you have eight gigabytes of VRAM. And we're getting about 75 frames a second, which might not be crazy over the top in like a multiplayer title, but in something like this, this is exactly the way I would choose to play. It's nice to be able to see all of the detail, especially if you're gonna run this on like a large screen or a TV or something. But even on this 27 inch 4K monitor, it looks absolutely fantastic and you're not having any issues with texture flickering or anything related to VRAM. This is a title that you will see quite a lot of fluctuation. I mean, Hogsmeade is the most demanding area, so you won't get such high frame rates, but obviously in corridors and more intimate areas, you're gonna see higher FPS. But fundamentally, this rig has a decent CPU. It's got plenty of VRAM, it's got plenty of horsepower. So for 1440p gaming, maybe even upscaled 4K, it's a decent rig. Of course, I need to be as fair and balanced as possible though. So the only thing I will say that is gonna be a weakness with an AMD system is of course the fact that the ray tracing performance of this isn't gonna be quite so tip top. So if that's what you care about more than anything else, you need that DLSS 3.0, Obviously, you're gonna to have to look at a card from Team Green, but realistically, for what most people actually want, which is all about price to performance, it's a rig that can pretty much handle everything, you get brilliant value for money, I think this is a pretty darn tasty overall package. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you make of this rig? What do you like? What would you change? I mean, for me, it's just swap out the 7700X for a 7700, or maybe change the cooler. But let me know down in the comment section below. Absolutely, smash the like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed. And of course, if you do wanna check out current pricing on anything that's featured in this video, you can find it linked down below with my Amazon affiliate links. But thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.